Hi, everybody. My name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto. And I even went into my chronometer and made my top carb 15. <clears throat> so here I am. And it is a hump day. I still love those two camel things, the one they showed in, in theaters and the one with him in the office. It still brings a smile to my face. So how are my little keto bunnies doing today? Are you having as grand a day as I am? Yesterday, I put together my version of my chicken cob salad with my organic chicken breast from <clears throat> Whole Foods that I got in a whole and a whole chicken and gave Greg the bottom half. He'll have the bottom half in two days and I'll have the rest of the chicken breast. It was great. And um, I did a, um, a quick video of it and I forgot to turn it sideways as usual. I apologize. But wow, what a pleasure to have. And I know it's chicken breast. So the only thing that's in it that's worth anything is the protein. But it worked because I added other fatty things like the olive oil and the macadamia nut oil, the cottage cheese, the um, chopped up bacon, and um, the little guac medallion from Sabra. But it just worked. And um, although the carbs are like 10 in it, not 10, they're like 8.5 and then I had 10 for the day, it still was so satiating and it kind of worked. Um, so I loved it and I only had the 50 grams of the lettuces. So my carbs from that standpoint were less, but the um, cottage cheese and the guac have more. <laughs> Can you believe it? It's cottage cheese and guac we're talking about, not the standard American diet entries. It has to make you laugh a little bit, doesn't it? So here we are, it's fall and um, figuring out how we go, trying to keep things in control maybe reel them back in, realizing that our dangerous season starts, especially if you're a sugar addict. It begins the end of October and it ends um, after Valentine's Day, because I think the Super Bowl is in there. And then Easter is plopped over there someplace. But it is a very tempting and uh, what else do you do when the weather gets cold sort of five months that we have. And a lot of people, if it's your first time going through this season, you know, an awareness is really helpful. And sticking close to the keto community that you've paired up with, matched up with, and some of us, like me, you know, uh, are in a lot of different Facebook book groups. I spend a lot of time here commenting. I do my keto coaching as well. So I am fully immersed in my, in my keto community and my carnivore community. Keto Mad, Mike, and Jim from Beating Obesity are two of my um, go-tos for uh, friends that are doing carnivore, as well as a lot of women dabble in it just for a while, kind of to hit the reset button. And I think that that is a very nifty idea, um, especially if you're not aware of food disturbances in your gut until you give up everything. And that's what these carnivore testers have done. A lot of them haven't turned back since they've done it. Um, I'm kind of middle in the road. I still like certain things that wouldn't be carnivore. Um, they might be zero carb, but they're not carnivore. But I do like, like the guac um, medallion. I do like my cheese. I do like my cottage cheese. And um, so, you know, I would never be a carnivore 100%, I don't think, because I value um, each bite of food and I try to make a nice savory meal for my OMAD. And my OMAD is one meal a day. It's between 2.30 and 3.30. And also, on that note, I intermittent fast, meaning that I have um, two coffees with butter and heavy whipping cream in them, one when I first wake up. If I'm working, it's 11 p.m., and if I'm not working, it's usually between 3 and 4 p.m. that I have my first cup with one tablespoon of Kerrygold and two tablespoons of Organic Valley Heavy Whipping Cream. And then the next coffee is at 9 with um, Organic Valley Ghee and Heavy Whipping Cream, 30 grams. And those two things, those two buttery coffees sustain me in my 
23 hours of not eating. And it's just something that's worked for me. I've been on maintenance for a number of months, um, but I'm always a bite away from the binges that I've known in my past. I never want to stop being green. Being green for me is just being so totally aware of the food issues. And so, um, as I did in a previous video, you know, my prison was having the whole world at my fingertips. And so I never felt safe. I didn't have freedom within at all because my addict was running my show. And now with simplicity and a few meals that I rotate in and out each week, they all just work. Um, so I was kind of surprised that I got so much enjoyment out of the chicken part because I'm basically a beef and pork chop kind of girl. But it worked. And so um, into the rotation, it will go. Um, so yeah, and I might substitute chicken thigh for the chicken breast so I can buy some boneless chicken thighs and just cook them up instead of the production of the roast. So what am I having today? What are you having? You never tell me what you're having. You never show me what you're having. Is this just a one-way street? <laughs> anyway, today, these are my macros for the day. One, 1162 calories. My protein is 65.7. My carbs are 3.8. And my fats are 101.3 grams. And I really like that. What am I having today? Well, this is what I'm having. And it's subject to change when I weigh the tenderloin. It's already been cooked. And so we're going to, I reheat in my copper pan with today it will be beef tallow and butter. Oh, oh, heart be still. Then I'm having my salad with 50 grams of baby lettuces. They did not have the baby butter. And I went to three stores and then I went, you know, let's, let's not get silly about this. I am having, um, I am having uh, 60 grams of cottage cheese. Uh, the good culture that I like. I found it at Stop and Shop as well as um, Whole Foods, so that's kind of good. I knew I saw it someplace be before Whole Foods. Even when, on, when I went on to the store locator, it did not show um, Stop and Shop. And so I'm going to have a tablespoon of macadamia nut oil and a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil that's organic with the lettuces and the cottage cheese. And so it's a very, very simple, um, simple meal. I love it, um, and I usually have it on Wednesday night so I can copy the page and put it into next week in my chronometer. And so, yeah, it just all works. Um, so a couple of people I've been reading about got a little derailed. They're trying to get back. Um, one had a breakup, and so um, <laughs> in a few days she put on five pounds between drinking and eating carbs. And so she's trying to pull it all back. And although I understand the emotions surrounding that and that need for comfort, fill the void, fill the void, fill the void, um, I'm hoping that she develops her um, emotional keto muscle. So the next time an upset arrives, it isn't a break from the solidness of the keto. For me, it's the uh, holding on to the solidness of the keto that keeps me, it keeps me strong. I, I told her I'm a member of the no matter what club and that, you know, I think it's, it's just very important to just keep it keto um, under any and all circumstances, kind of like the not drinking. And especially because I share that addiction with her too, with the alcohol, I know that that, that is definitely not an option. And so, but I feel the same way about staying keto -fied, and I don't mean keto foods, I mean staying with my keto 100%, no matter what. It's tracked, it's weighed, it just, it's just something that, that works for me. It doesn't work for everybody that way. No, a lot of you here don't weigh or measure. A lot of you here have more fats than me, less fats than me, more protein than me, less. A lot of you drink tons more water than me. A lot of you have no supplements. A lot of you have a lot of different salts like I do. 
a lot of you have to steer clear of salt because you feel it could affect your blood pressure or your health. And um, I respect whatever each person does. Um, I totally encourage people to um, read other things, watch other videos, and come to their own conclusions. You know, when I when I keto coach with the emails that last a month or two or three or four, um, some of the things are just getting you to that place where it's like, this is so ingrained, pardon the pun, in me that, you know, I, I just, I get it. I know how to do it. I, my blinders are on. I've learned how to squint. I can go through the grocery store and the things aren't calling me. And as you know, a lot of, you know, we don't have to go down a lot of the aisles of the grocery store. And so what do they do? They put the crap at the ends of each aisle. So in case, in case you forgot, there's still chocula or, um, you know, some sort of junky um, processed bread or something, you know, they, they just, <laughs> in case you forgot. Um, so I love, I love the items that I buy, you know, the Pete and Jerry's organic jumbo eggs, the bacon. I love the cherry wood um, bacon, Smithfield or Armor. I don't know. Um, I just like the cherry wood. I also like the Corando Applewood smoked bacon. Yes, they have nitrites and nitrates in them. Um, but, you know, I've, I've tried the nitrate free and they just don't excite me. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of when you buy a different brand of something and you're kind of disappointed. Um, I do know that the Applegate uh, turkey and pork uncured pepperoni is delicious. I usually buy, can't think of it right now, but um, it's not, uh, that has a lot more flavor to it. So uh, I enjoy it. It could have dubious ingredients in it just because it put it, it has uncured. It's not like it's organic uncured, right? So we have to be careful. And I like my certain lettuces. And as you just heard, I'm willing to make the trips. You know, I think three is my limit on one day. You know, that was, that was just crazy. So I ended up with the baby lettuces and I will live. Isn't that amazing? I will live. Who said I couldn't change or adjust? Who said that out there? Yeah. So I just keto on. I keep it very, very simple. I expect my recovery at 68 to be slow and steady like a turtle. I'm also a snowflake, as are you, because you are definitely unique. And what could work for me would never work for you. And what works for you is something that Maybe I already tried and I said, hmm, that's not going to work for me. We never know until we try. And so, you know, my best suggestion to any of you, if you do make a change up, especially if it's in something like your macros, you add more protein, you take away more fat, give it a week, let your body adjust and then assess. Don't give it a day or two and then say, well, that didn't work. Give it a week. You know, we, we tend to be diet jumpers and the next great uh, diet is going to be what works for us. So stick with the tried and true tweak. It doesn't mean giving up keto under 20 total grams. It means tweaking what you've got. Some of you might find that you do better with a little more protein. Some of you might find you do better with a little more fat. Some of you may find that drinking Soleil water you know, which is an abundance of uh, sodium, works for you. Other people might find that lowering their carbs to, you know, wicked, wicked low, even under five total grams, um, with just a smidgen of, of uh, plant-based carbs, uh, works for you better, that you sleep better, that um, everything else seems to work better. Uh, we learn as we go, and we are unique, hence the snowflakes. And with the pickles, it's uh, to me, it's once you've gone keto and had some modicum of success or some great success, uh, you can't go back. Uh, I mean, I can't picture going back to the standard American diet. I just, I can't. I can't imagine wanting the things that got me here through different stages of really getting to keto, which would be the low carb, high fat the um, for a long time, which is... Uh, lots of carbs, like uh, sweet potatoes and, and uh, white potatoes, 
and an abundance of veggies to um, doing tw under 20 total carbs, which was having 150 to 200 grams of lettuces each day, a la Dr. Berg, to what I'm doing now, which is like 50 grams of a lettuce um, as my veggie, except for Sunday night when I have the three veggies with the steak off the big green egg. So I just go at it the way that I do and stay on maintenance. I weigh myself one time a week. And then I put it into my chronometer from that Thursday morning to the next Wednesday, what I weighed for the entire week. I am not a scale jumper. I use it as a marker and that's all that it is. I don't go crazy about that because as many of you know, if you're a female, you are a water retenting, re, um, a water retentioning, water retentioning? Yeah, you hold water and uh, like no other human being, meaning males. And, um, and so, you know, it's not always the best indicator. What's the best indicator is your gut and your head. And are you satiated? Are you content? Are you, are you like restless only once in a while? Is your sleep better? All those sort of things. And the scale just gives you that, you know, it can make your day or break your day. So stay away from it unless you're using it as a guide. And so that's what I do once a week. Well, this concludes yet another edition, another cup of coffee's worth of Sarah with pearls and wisdom and keto and total carbs low, way low. I have enjoyed being here with you today. I hope you have been with me too. What are you eating today? Let me know below. And your macros. I will talk to you later. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye for now.